Tuesday, December 22, 1964. Three days before Christmas, they met and squared off for the first time. One, a 36-year-old, all-American, somewhat mischievous, happy-go-lucky kid from Connecticut. The other, a 44-year-old, staunch, old-world, blue-eyed German. As their characters sparred in their first-ever uneven battle of wits, each actor held his own private reservations about the premise of the series for which they were testing and about each other. The series, a comedy set in an allied prisoner of war camp deep inside Nazi Germany during the height of World War II, already had a cloud of controversy hanging over it. Further, one man considered his counterpart far too stiff and serious to perform comedy adequately. The other believed his opponent was too wild and crazy to be contained. Yet, as they performed their screen test and gave their characters life, their chemistry clicked and soon their worries dissipated. While neither man could have predicted what the future would hold, on that brisk and sunny day in Los Angeles, television history was made. The casting of the brash United States Army Air Force officer Colonel Robert E. Hogan and the pompous German Luftwaffe officer Colonel Wilhelm Klink was inspired. For this series, a comedy with the serious backdrop of war, to succeed, the lead players had to be the perfect fit. The dynamic portrayal of this military odd couple had to be articulate, accurate, and precise. For the show to work, for the concept to be accepted, for one of the most outlandish premises in television history to be believed, the actors signed to play the two leading characters not only had to bring these extreme individuals to life with broad fictional strokes, they had to make them real in the details. Bob Crane had been seeking his own perfect fit from almost the moment he began appearing on The Donna Reed Show. Although not the type of series he wanted for himself, he was grateful to Donna Reed for all that she did for him in his career. The experience Bob gained from Donna Reed and her show was tremendous, and his pay during those years even better. Once he had departed from the Donna Reed show, however, his income was sliced in half, and with three young children at home, he was eager to find another acting job quickly to supplement his radio salary. He didn't know exactly what he wanted. He just knew what he didn't want. What he had declared was the, you'd be just right opposite the already signed Femme Star, part. Every single television offer he had received after the Donna Reed show was of this kind, and he had shunned them all, much to the chagrin of producers. Donna Reed just wasn't my cup of tea, Bob explained. I decided that if I ever had my own show, I wanted it to be more hip than Donna Reed. Trouble was, after starting on that, those were the kind of offers I got. Then one day during the 1964 holiday season, Bob had an impromptu meeting with producer Jerry Thorpe at a Los Angeles metro station. There, Jerry presented him with an offer to co-star alongside Pat Crowley in a new television situation comedy, Please Don't Eat the Daisies. It was a fantastic offer, but it was yet another role the up-and-coming actor did not want. As he had done with earlier offers, Bob shot it down. Jerry Thorpe was frustrated. Bob's rigid stubbornness and his history of rejecting profound and potentially career-boosting offers had become legendary in Hollywood. Producers first met up with Bob stonewalling when they wanted him to transition his radio show to a television talk show, and he refused. As an actor, Bob was turning down every role that came his way. Now what didn't Bob like? I had to talk for a long time to explain to the producer why I wasn't right for Please Don't Eat the Daisies, Bob said. I told him I thought it was the father image. I didn't think it was me. That is, in five years they would be calling me Mr. Pat Crowley. I also had to explain why I didn't want to do My Living Doll before Robert Cummings was considered for the role. I had an idea that I wanted a show that would keep me happy for five years. I tried to figure how I'd feel if I had to do the part for five years. Daisy's was a safe show, but I didn't want that. I had that with Donna. Then what did he want? It wasn't easy for Bob to put into words exactly what he wanted. Mm -hmm.